What's up DIY Nation? Welcome back to you, Floor. Now we are out here in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, and we are about to lay some vinyl plank flooring. It's been a while since we did a flooring video and one where we did actually a whole house. So today we're going to take you through and show you how we get started with this, the steps we're going to take one through, however many steps it takes to get this job done. And if you guys have any questions, anything like that, this is going to be the video that you want to ask those on because we have every multitude of flooring from the trim to where how we lay it out to the direction we run it to transitions, anything like that. So we're about to get started. I'm going to show you what kind of vinyl we're using it. I've never used it before, but I can't imagine it would be too hard to figure out. This is it right here. It is, uh, looks like it says Style Selections Waterproof Vinyl Plank. I'm not exactly sure who the maker of this is, but I mean, that says Style selection. So I imagine you could look that up online. Probably something you get at Home Depot or Lowe's or order it on Amazon. I'm not really sure. This is what it looks like over here. And so that's, that's how we're going to, we're going to be laying it. I suggest we lay it in this direction. As you guys can see, this floor right here has a lot of hardwood nail down that has a lot of detail and things that you just don't normally do in a normal hardwood floor. So whoever did this put a lot of thought into the design pattern and it's really kind of cool because as you can see, the very front living room is ran on a diagonal. That's number one instead of just either this way or this way. And then as you can see in here, he did some kind of pattern where he did like his initials right here. Like a V and then yeah. Over here they say he put his initials, which w or an M. did a W or an M, as you can see, laid that in there. And that, that's pretty much centered within a picture frame. And then the design is symmetrical on both sides with these chevrons that he ran over here. And then he also ran them over here. And then he picture framed it out here with looks like one, two, three, four, four boards. And they are different sizes. It's like there's some four inch, six inch, and then some two and a quarter inch hardwood floor there. That's, that's pretty unique. Then this right here is just a straight normal lay. But it did put a red border around the kitchen. That is so interesting. And of course, there he just followed that out and kept the border underneath. They bordered out. Bordered the around the vent. the vent. That's very interesting. Now it switches when you go from the living room into the first bedroom. Yeah, we still have this amazing border going around, but it looks like big giant parquet flooring, as you can see. Now I can't tell whether this is real parquet or if the guy literally cut all these pieces individually and put them in here. That's very possible based on what I'm seeing the with the rest of the, of the house. house. Yeah. Like he just did whatever he felt like doing. I mean, these could be individual panels, but I don't know. I, mean, I doubt it. I would say that he, he did all this by hand. Pretty good craftsmanship. Of course, over here we're going to have a transition to deal with, so you guys will get to see that. And then, of course, he goes on in just straight hardwood into the closet right there. Nothing nothing different or fancy. All right guys, so that's just about it. I'm gonna go get my laser level out. I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna make a control line so that way I can start. Cause as you can see, we have the living room over here and we also have the bedroom over there. And so if we're gonna start against this wall over here, we're gonna have to figure out how to get that thing straight when we're coming around and going into two different rooms. I like to use a laser level for that and I'll show you how to do that coming up next. All right, here we go. Yes. Okay. And make sure I go off baseboard, baseboard, not wall and baseboard. I'm gonna make a control line right here. So basically, uh, it looks like 10 foot's a good number. I'm gonna make a little cross foot right here. All right, now I'm gonna grab my laser level. And we're gonna make a line all the way across. Let's check this out. I want to put it on my crow's foot right there. See that? Yeah, yeah. And now, I'm going to go down here. Where's, oh, I see it. Oh, you know what it is? Look at my piece of paper here. Come up and take, take a look at this. Let's say that this is a straight line that you're trying to achieve. And you've got your, you're up here shining your laser down that way. To you, you're just tapping this thing over like this much. Just that much right there. But if you look, by the time that protrudes and gets all the way out there, look how far away you're going to be. So you really got to dial this in. Me, I had that thing right on my mark in there, and I think I'm in here. But I can see the laser light was shining right through here. My mark is over here. So I'm, what I'm looking for is over in this direction, right there. See it? All right, so you guys can see that we have this green line going down, and it's shining right directly lined up with my crow's foot right there. That's how I'm going to determine my straightness in this floor and how I'm going to be able to run it in multiple rooms without having to worry about whether or not they're going to connect when they come 
and run the door. I'm going to draw this line up with a pencil and a straight edge using my laser level right here and I'm going to use that as my control line to pull off of in both rooms to get myself started. That's the plan and that's what we're about to do. Let's go. Now I know I could probably make a crow's foot at both ends and snap a chalk line, but I don't like using chalk indoors and with fresh paint it tends to get chalk everywhere. And with the distance this long, if you don't pull your line super tight, it can have a bow and arrow effect sometimes and get a little off your mark in the center. This laser level does not lie and my pencil mark is super easy to see. It may take a little longer to get across the house, but it's dead accurate. Special thanks to our sponsor Sigmund Laser Level for providing this amazing laser level. In fact, if you guys are in the market for a laser level, right now you can receive a discount including a $45 off coupon and we'll provide that in the description. Alright you guys, so I got my control line right there. I can't see it. Oh, there it is. I got this control line drawn all the way down and I did that with a straight edge. So that's going to be our reference for our starting point up here at the front. And that's going up there. Let's go. Alright you guys, so I put a couple boards together over here to show you what it's going to be looking like when it comes to the hallway. This is generally when I have to do a whole house install, I like to make sure that the hallway is very straight and that it is symmetrical. I don't want to see like a one inch piece on this side and then a four inch piece on that side. It really does kind of look weird. So I like to start with the hallway as a reference to where I want to get started with where it comes to up right there. Now let's take a look at this right quick. I could do it this way where I put the plank being the center. Does that make sense? I could also make it where there's a crack being in the dead center. If you look at over here, it seems like I do have enough room to put that in there and then wrap another one around there. But why do that? I like doing half and half when it comes to the doorways. So I would like to have this more inside there. And also, this is 36 and an eighth at this end. And down at this end, it is 35 and 3 quarters. So my expansion gap gets a little bit wide when we get down at this end. And so if I was just to take one of these out and then use the crack as my center, then I can make these cuts as big as they need to be. And if they're a little bit wider at that end, I can take that into effect. I'm just looking for straight when it comes down through here off of this line that we drew right here. And I'm going to use this line as a reference to get myself down the center of this hallway right here. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that right now. All right, so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to measure in between these two points right here. And I have 35 and 7 eighths. 35 and 7 eighths. And here's another trick that I do is uh, I just fold it over on itself. That gives me 17 and 7 eighths. So 17 and 7 eighths. And right now you can see my... I'm going to go ahead and take this loose. All right, so 17 and 7 eighths, and the 17 and 7 eighths is going to be to the crack, not to the tongue out here, but to the crack. 17 and 7 eighths to the crack, and that's on both sides. Right now, I'm basically centering the plank at the front and the back. Then I'll draw a line connecting those two points. That way I'll be able to check that line to see if it's parallel with our control line using the Sigmund laser level. Alright, so here's my mark here and then I got a mark up there. I'm going to try to get as much of it out into the living room as I can. Alright, so there it is. You can see I got my line right there. Now all I have to do is come over to this line that we made originally, pull a number from there to there, come back down this way, Pull our number from pull our number from here over to there the same shine a laser all the way down there and see what we got to work with and then we'll be able to straighten that hallway out wow what a good number 38 and three quarters on the dot all right you guys so I got the laser level set up at 38 and 3 quarters from this line over to this line right here and then I came over here we have 38 and 3 quarters all right so see so you can see when I put the board up you can see the line see my pencil mark right there that's what I'm looking at it's right on the money now back here where we had our other line as you can see we're not exactly on it's a little bit to the back that would mean that we need to make sure our mark is back there I'm gonna make a mark 
I'll make a mark right here and I'll make a mark back there. We'll get rid of this mark right here because that's no good. I mean, it's really, really close. You can see it's very, very close. But if I want it to be straight with the rest of the house, I'm gonna to have to make sure that I go off my control line that we're gonna be using for the living room and for the other bedroom. All right, guys, I gotta tweak this thing and move it around just a little bit. Shouldn't take too long and then we'll get started laying some floor. Hang tight. you guys so I got both of my lines drawn now and I know some of you are probably saying Z why do you need two control lines isn't that a little bit confusing couldn't you just use one and I probably could have had the doorway to this bedroom been lined up somewhere within this hallway and it wouldn't matter just as long as the doorway was lined up where I could go that way I could I could snap a line all the way through the hallway and then all the way through the door as it stands I went right here anyway you can see I now have now, why do I need this line here, the second one? Because that will determine how big my starter pieces are over there. If I'm wanting to go where my crack splits up the hallway and the hallway looks symmetrical throughout the whole hallway, then I'm going to want to line my boards up to find out what my starter piece is over there. Now, I guess you're wondering, Z, how are you going to figure that out? I'm going to show you now. Let's go. All right, you guys, so I made this little platform here. I clicked well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I click seven planks together and measurement from face to face is 49 inches. So that's a good number I can work with. I came back over here and I marked the crack, not the edge of the tongue, but the crack, because that's really where uh, the next board's going to start. So let me move this out of the way. I'm going to make a straight edge mark right there. Shove this back one and put the face Line it up at the crack. Line up my pencil mark on both sides. Remember, I'm not lining it up with the front here. I'm lining up the crack with the line I just made. Now, I'm sure there are some guys out there who love to build this and fix that, and they probably have a sweet construction calculator and a computer to know how big every piece should be throughout the whole install. I've tried using the calculator method, but I don't always like my results with the starter piece. Doing it this way gives me a physical, actual visual of the size of my starter plank. I don't know, my space is 11 and 5 eighths. I'm gonna come over here to the face because that's where we are pulling all of our numbers and pull 11 and 5 eighths, just right there. Okay, now if I unhook this, you can see that my starter piece needs to be four and five eighths of an inch to get all the way tight up against that. Remember, if we get a little bit, if we get too tight, we won't have room for expansion. Instead of four and five eighths, we're gonna go with a starter piece of four and three eighths. That will be our starter piece. Time to start ripping some of those up and let's get rolling. All right, you guys, so here's our first piece, four and three eighths. This is going to be our starter piece. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut a bunch of these up because that's gonna be our starter piece for the front here. It's also gonna be our starter pieces for that in there. And you'll notice that over here at the front door that that part of it goes in a little bit more than this. So our four and three eighths is not gonna work with that. So we're gonna to have to make sure that over here on the other side of the door, we are four and three eighths, but we'll have to bring it around and bring it up to this. We'll probably take that quarter round off that's there and then bring it all the way to there and we'll put new quarter round down on top of that or something else because right now this is almost flush and then if we put floor down and put quarter round on top of that, it may be too tall. So we'll figure out what we're gonna do at that point when we get to it. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut a bunch of these up for the bedroom and for the living room minus this piece right here. All right, so I got 108 and a half in here from my control line to the face of that. And if you want me to, I can come in here, because I gave you those spacers over there in the window, and I right. can come in here and measure from this line to 108 and a half on your face over here, and then uh, I can draw, like we go ahead and click the second row in here and draw on the tongue of that. That way you know where to line it up, so when you get to the vent, you know how to pull that off. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not real worried about the vent right now. I got, 
I'm gonna, just gonna floor wall to wall and then we can push it however way we need to go as long as I stay wall to wall. Yeah, can do that. I think I, I can do that. Yeah, I'm not worried about the vent. Okay guys, what is about to go down is not necessarily conventional. I did want to give this advisory before I explain what's about to happen. I'm just letting you know I have been doing floor for as old as my son is and he's 15. So we're at 15 years doing this so I kind of know how to finagle things, move things, work things around. I would not suggest doing what I'm about to explain to you if you are a beginner. I would use spacers, space it out, use screws and some scraps. I did make Kelly some scraps in here as you can see they're over there in the window but uh, she won't be using those today. Because this room is wall-to-wall -wall square with not, without any issues, she's able to go ahead and just floor that thing. And when we get close to wrapping around the door here, right here, we can use a pry bar and just finagle that thing this way and that way. And then if she goes a little bit too far, we can always put a scrap piece of floor in there and tap, 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 tap it back until it's perfect on the line. Once we get that, we can come around this door right here and floor all the way around that and have a straight line all the way through. Like I say, that's not really conventional. I don't suggest you doing that, but that's the route we're going. You may say to yourself, Z, I've been doing this about five years and I feel confident I'm going that route because that just saves a little bit of time. That's on you. All right, we're gonna get started here, you guys, so hang tight. Here we go. Hey, look at this. This, this is how they explained how to install the floor. Like once you get it all set up, like you wanna know, do you put the long in first? Or do you put the short in first and pull the long end in? And, and the directions can be different on, depending on what floor you get. But this one says, number six, installing additional planks in second row. That's all you get in that picture. So you get, I'm going to flip it this way because it's kind of this way. You put the side in first, then the back, then it goes down. And the only way you know that is by the arrows. What arrows? That was right there. Uh -huh. It's like, if you read it this way, you would read it from left to right, so it would be top to bottom this way. <laughs> what does that say there? It says, installing additional planks in second row. Uh-huh. That's all you get. And then you get the arrows. Right on. Hmm. So it looks to me like it's little side, big side, and then it goes down, just like we would normally do it. I got you. That's just all the explanation you get. So if you don't know how to read that, now you know. There you go, guys. You heard it here first. Don't do that. What the heck? Even though I'm going wall to wall, putting the first two rows together, they're still going to knock the seams out of the back. So you need to put your seams together with something. So when you're uh, knocking this in, it doesn't yeah. knock these out. Kelly makes a good point. You guys understand what she's saying? You ever, you ever dealt with that first row, how annoying it can be because it'll, it'll split your seams apart? She's locking the seams together back there. So that doesn't happen. So she can just floor on as she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I can floor all the way up to the door right there. For sure, okay. Nice, nice job, Kelly. Thanks. All right, you guys, take a look. This is what Kelly has put together so far in here. And it looks like chaos, but trust me, she knows exactly what is going on and what she's doing. So with that being said, you see where she is. And you guys can see where I am right now. But let's see who makes it to the door frame first, huh? Let's just see. Mm. Oh, yeah, because I'm not going to up out here. Uh -huh. If you want to go, we can go. Oh, Kelly said if I want to go, we can go. Let's just go. All right, let's see. This isn't my best lighting, but it gets both of us in there somewhat, maybe. Oh, no, I'm going to take it back over here. You know, I can just check back in with you every once in a while. And...
that point right here. And uh, sometimes, um, Kelly usually does this for me. She'll lay boards out to let me know where the past uh, board is so that when we start, we don't get where one seam lands on another. Oh, yeah. She didn't do that this time, so we are like three and a half, four inches off of a seam, but that's okay. Once it all clicks together, it's going to be beautiful. This is where we are right now. I'm going to go ahead and click this in and build off of it that way and then build off of it that way. I think that's going to be the best way to go with that. And then we should be able to move on forward. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to set this right here. What's up, you guys? Welcome back. It's the next day and it is the morning. And I don't think I mentioned yesterday that I am actually in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, which is my hometown. And not only is it my hometown, I'm literally four minutes down the road. So today is Sunday and we're trying to get this job wrapped up by tomorrow evening, which would be Monday so we can get back to our rent this, flip that job and wrap up that bathroom that we've been working on over there. So Kelly likes to sleep in and she hasn't been able to sleep in very much. So I decided since I'm four minutes down the road, I'll go ahead and let her sleep in, come down here, throw some floor in, go pick her back up around 10 a.m. or something like that. She's not really Kelly until she gets that first coffee, so she'll probably want to grab one of those first. But I did want to take you through and show you what we got done yesterday and show you the plan for today. So let's go take a look. All right, so this is the bedroom. Off, if you came into the front door, it would be the first bedroom on the right. And as you can see, we clicked in. And last night, we were able to get around this here. So Kelly's little plan worked. She's still got a little piece to throw in back there, but she got a vent cut out. She got her expansion cap over here. And I had already cut those pieces, so they, they fit perfect because we lined it up with that line. Remember the control line we had made through here? And it lined up pretty good. That's what we got last night. And believe it or not, look, there's no lights in here, so... We were pulling out these last night to, just to be able to see. And as you can see, that's not much of a light up there. So it got kind of dark on us around seven, eight o'clock. So we pulled on out of here and figured that'd be perfect stopping point since, uh, like I said, I'm a real early bird. I get up at like five o'clock in the morning, sometimes six o'clock in the morning. And I basically either just work on videos or watch YouTube videos for inspiration. Shout out to Studback. And then um, I get my day started. So. This is ideal for me to be right down the road from where I live and be able to come in here and lay some floor. So I'm gonna stop talking, get in here and lay some floor. We'll go pick up Kelly in just a little bit. So you guys hang tight. Hey guys, look who showed up for work. What is this? What is what? What is this? That is a... Uh, uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called. I've never seen a plastic one before. Well, it looks that, like it may... Is that, it broke? Is it something missing from it? No, no. Here, hold this for a second. Yeah, I can. All right, we used to build desks at this place called Sound Construction. And sometimes the thickness of a piece of wood that needed to be sanded down had to be exactly a specific thickness. So what you do is you would take this and come over here and do like that and then run it up there and then lock it in. And that would give you the exact number you're looking for. And if you're working with something like a CNC machine or a sander or whatever it is machine, you can dial it in to that number right there and just come up and check, sand it down, check it, sand it down, check it. And as soon as it slides in just like that, you have exactly the number you're looking for. Forgot That's cool. Before. Now we have one. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how you lock it though, because this one it, doesn't I thought it was broke. I actually thought it was a part of the thermometer thermostat when I picked it up. I mean, I forgot what this was called. Is this working? Is that right? I've never seen a, meta, a plastic one of those before. No, I can't, you I, I wouldn't trust that. Why? Being plastic, yeah, isn't that flexible? It may be flexible, but it's the numbers aren't moving. Uh, I guess. It's kind of like a ruler. Yeah. All right. All right, moving on. I got to get this piece of floor in over here so we can yeah, get the rest of this floor. Yeah, maybe the locker's missing from it. 
Kelly's gonna start some quarter round. I believe she'll start in this room right here because while she slept in and got her beauty sleep, I rocked this rim out. It's 100% well. It's 99.2%. That ain't my problem, that's Kelly's. <laughs> All right, moving on. What's up you guys, welcome back. We're back out at the property at Mount Juliet, Tennessee on the LVP job and it is day three and it is the morning. Now Kelly did get to sleep in this morning so uh, she's here with me. So I'm gonna take you through and show you what it is that we got done and one of the reasons I wanna show you what it is that we got done is because I've been doing this for about 15 years and a normal installer report probably would have got a little bit more of this done. But the reason we don't get a lot of progress done is because we are also YouTubers. So we have to stop sometimes, set the camera up, grab the camera, move it in different angles. Uh, something didn't work right, so we had to stop the camera, refilm that again. So it is a little bit of work, but hey, it's all free to you guys. And all I ask you is to smash the like button if you like what you're seeing. And if you're a returning guest to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. There's no sense in waiting. I'm gonna keep putting these things out so you might as well get notified. And make sure you turn that bell on so they'll let you know. Anyway, let's go walk through and take a look and see what we got done yesterday, make a plan for today, and explain to you what we got going forward. Let's go. Okay team, considering all we had to do, I think we made quite a bit of progress. I got the bedroom 95% done minus the doorway. I like to blow and go, so I usually fill those in on transition day. The walk-in closet got 100% done, and as far as our front door goes, we will need something custom to cover up that gap. But don't worry about that, I have a plan for that. As far as the hallway goes, man, would you just look at that. The seam is running directly down the middle, and the sides look like they grew there. They were perfect fit, and it made it easy for me to transition into the bedrooms. Speaking of the bedrooms, we still have a lot of floor to install. We have this room to finish, the one across the hall, and we still have whatever this little small room is connected to the utility room. That's right, we have to do the utility room too. Not to mention we have the kitchen, but we're going to save that for last. Well, that's going to do it for this one, guys. We hope to see you on the next one. Till then, take care and stay safe. Peace.